Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are a returning viewer and welcome if you're new, very glad to have you. I uh, hope you're having an, a good day. Um, my name is Anna, I live in Seattle, Washington and I like to make things. And in my video, in my channel I talk about things that I make and today we're gonna be talking specifically about knitting. Um, the projects that I finished in the month of March, project, projects that I've been working on, and then some very exciting new acquisitions at the end. Um, I went on a lovely trip to Scandinavia this month and I got lots of fun yarn to play with. So I'm excited to talk about it with you guys. Um, I will start by talking about my sweater that I'm currently wearing. Um, so this is the Swept Away sweater from Drops. It's a free pattern. Um, it's got these lovely cables down the front and back uh, and down the arms. It's a saddle shoulder construction. So you kind of do this arm panel and then do some increases for the body and the sleeve at the same time to make this panel be continuous from the neck band. Um, and then it has balloon sleeves that I think you increase for, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you increase for the sleeves and then rapidly decrease at the cuffs. Um, I might knit this in a cotton yarn. It's a reclaimed 100% organic cotton, I think. Um, and I have dyed it. This is naturally dyed with black beans. Um, the original color was much darker, but it has faded over time because black beans aren't a super color fast dye stuff but still it's a really pretty light blue um, and you can see that it's hand dyed because the skeins were quite different. Um, so I think I may end up buying this again just to kind of get some of the color back. Um, but for now I really like it, it's very comfortable. I like this pattern, I think the cable motif is really pretty. The one thing that I would change is to add some short rows because there are no short rows in this design and I just find that it pulls up at the front of my neck quite a lot so I think the best way to add short rows would be to do them in the ribbing um, on the back. This is a folded over neckband, but I don't think it's originally a folded over neckband in the pattern. Um, I did a folded over neckband, but I think you could still have a folded over neckband and do short rows. So um, another thing is that I put an elastic in the folded over neckband of this because without it, it was quite a wide neckband. I think it was probably because of the cotton. It's not written for cotton. It's knit. It's written for wool, but I wanted to use cotton and it's a really nice spring sweater because it's lightweight enough, but still gives some warmth. So that's my sweater, my swept away sweater from Drops. Um, yeah, so I will start now. We'll go jump into the finished objects. Finished projects, if you will, because my mom thinks it's silly that we call them objects. Um, the first thing is one that you've seen before. I was working on it in the last monthly video and this is the October sweater or not sweater this is a hat ah this is the October hat by Sloan Rosenthal it is a free pattern on Ravelry um, and I knit mine with Taki Yarns Donegal Homespun it's a vintage yarn that is no longer available but it's a worsted weight single ply um, kind of tweedy yarn and I really like the pattern. It has a really beautiful cable motif. So it's kind of two sets of cable motifs. There's these smaller traveling cables and then a wider traveling cable. Um, so the pattern is really pretty. The only thing is that this hat is really, really big on me. Um, the pattern has you cast on 120 stitches and you can kind of see like how flared it is here. I put an elastic through the tubular cast on to try and cinch it in a little bit, but it's still just really, really big and loose. So that's disappointing. I don't know if it was me, if it was my gauge that was off or um, if it's just a little bit big, but in order to make it smaller, you'd have to take out like an entire cable repeat. And I think that would be too much. So maybe just going down an equal size would help. I don't know but I'm kind of sad that it doesn't fit because I'm not going to wear it otherwise. So I'll probably end up ripping it out, but for now I'm just going to let it sit unloved <laughs> in my stash. Um, unless maybe someone I know once has a bigger head than me, which is hard because I have a really big head um, and wants this, but it's really pretty and I really enjoyed doing the cables. 
So um, this is part of a collection. It's the Year of Hats collection by Sloan Rosenthal. And there's some really cute hats in that collection and they're all free. So I would definitely recommend checking them out. Um, just, you know, be mindful of your gauge and proceed with caution. So yeah, this is really cute. Um, I really like the color. It's like a really great bright orangey red. So maybe I'll make another hat with this. So I can have a lovely bright orangey red hat for next winter. So that was my first thing that was not really super successful. And my second thing was also <laughs> not super successful. Um, you haven't seen this before, but this is the Trinity Bellwoods Bralette. It's a free pattern from Yarn Inspirations. Um, and I have some thoughts about this. So it is a free pattern. Um, and it's in brioche. This is my first time doing brioche and I really enjoyed it. I didn't find it particularly difficult. So I would say if you want to try something in brioche, just try it. It's, it's especially in the round, really not bad at all. Um, and knitting flat wasn't hard either because you do knit this like triangle section flat. Um, this I made with sugar and cream, Lily sugar and cream, 100% cotton that you can just get from like any craft store here in the US. It's in the shade indigo and it was just leftover yarn that I had from a blanket project that I did um, last summer. So here she is. This is the smallest size and it's really, really big. I, that's my biggest qualm about this pattern is that it's just really big. I feel like a bralette is supposed to fit with a little bit of negative ease and this does not. Um, and I think part of the issue could be that the pattern calls for several different needle sizes, um, but it never tells you when to change your needles to the, a different size. So you do the ribbing at the bottom on a four millimeter needle and the pattern calls for a 3.25 millimeter needle, but never tells you to use that needle. So I'm thinking that you're supposed to use the 3.25 for the body. Um, and that maybe would have made the gauge a little bit tighter, but it didn't tell me, so I didn't change. So this brioche section is really, really loose and big. The good thing about that is that it's quite stretchy. So even though it looks a little bit short to be a bralette on me, um, it is plenty stretchy. I will also say that the cups are really long. Like it's, this is definitely more of a tank pattern than a bralette. Um, and I ran out of yarn, so my straps are a little bit short. Um, so I think I'm gonna end up ripping out some of the back because the back comes up really high also. Um, I'm gonna rip that back a little bit, probably an inch or so, and then use that to make the straps a little bit longer. So overall, this was not my favorite pattern. It did knit up very quickly. And I think it will be comfortable, but it's just not really what I was looking for in a bralette, which is like basically, I was looking for something that would be like a comfortable layering piece for underneath other sweaters um, or t-shirts or something in the summertime. And this is just, I just like, look how much it flares out in the armpit area. It's just quite large. So proceed with caution on that one as well. Um, but I will say it was a good beginner brioche learning opportunity because you learn brioche in the round, brioche flat, brioche decreases. So there's some options for you for that. That was my second finished object. Let me grab my third one, it's over here. This is my third finished object, which you have not seen before. Um, this is a sweater. This is the Vima Pullover by Sari Nordland. Um, and I was a test knitter for this pattern, uh, which I really enjoyed. It actually just released yesterday, so the pattern is now available. Um, but I start the test knit started in maybe the first week of March and ended. It was a very short test knit. It was about two weeks. Um, granted, the test knit didn't have you knit the entire piece. You had to knit the um, yoke and one sleeve in that time. Um, and I was able to knit the yoke and one sleeve in about a week. I knit this very quickly. I think I finished the whole sweater in ten days. Um, but here she is. It's a lovely cabled sweater. So it has this pretty cable motif down the front and on the sleeves. Um, it's three cables on the sleeves and five cables on the front. These little guys too. The body is knit in moss stitch. Um, and I really enjoyed this sweater because it's very, it's a construction technique that I'd never done before. So technically it's a drop shoulder construction. So you start, it's a top down and it's a drop shoulder. So you start at the neck and you do the folded over neckband 
And then you take some stitches and you knit these panels out to the side on both shoulder. And then you pick up stitches across the entire front and do some short row shaping for the shoulders. And then you knit your front panel and then you do the same thing on the back. Um, so I thought that was a really interesting construction. I never made a sweater like this before, but I really enjoyed it. And the shoulder shaping makes the shoulders fit nicely. Um, and overall, it's really interesting. I like the two by two ribbing details. Um, you pick up stitches for the sleeves and then knit, knit down. Another thing I liked about this is that the decreases for the sleeve are on either side of this cable panel, not on the bottom like you normally would see. So it's not super obvious. Um, and overall, I really, I really enjoyed knitting this. This yarn is Cascade 220 in the shade Lake Chelan Heather. Um, I don't know what the number is, but that's the name of it. It's a really pretty kind of bluish, greenish, yellowish Heather. It actually reminds me a lot of my eye color. What do you think? Um, but yeah, I really like this yarn. I think the texture of this fabric really shows off the heathered nature of the yarn really well. You get all the colors kind of popping out. Um, the one thing I will say is that because this yarn is woolen spun, it's very smooth, but it's very smooth. So it doesn't, the, the cables when you block it kind of get flattened. You can see they're not very high profile. I think if this was knit in a woolen spun yarn, the cables would pop even more. Um, so that's the one gripe I have about this. But other than that, I've only worn it once, but I wore it on an airplane for like quite a few hours and it seems to be holding up really well. No pilling to note. Um, and overall, I just think it's really cute and very pretty. The one thing, the only thing I don't love about the fit is that the fabric kind of bunches up in the armpit because of the drop shoulder. So you see it just kind of gets, I'm not sure you can tell without me like actually putting it on, but it does kind of bunch in a weird way under here, but I don't think there's really a way to mitigate, mitigate that with this construction. And it's not really a big deal. It's just me being nitpicky. So overall, I really enjoyed making this. Um, I did have to go up a full needle size. I find that I often have to go up in Sari's patterns. Um, so I think the pattern called for a 4.5 on the main needle and I ended up using a 5.5 to get gauge. Um, but the fabric is very nice. It's warm without being thick and it's got a nice drape to it. Um, and it's not like super airy, like you can't, can't see through it. So. I mean a little bit, but it's a good density. And I really liked it. So I would recommend this pattern if you're looking for a nice cable um, pattern to try out. There were some new techniques in here for me and overall just very cute. I think it will be good for spring in this color. I like it a lot. So that is my Vima pullover by Sari Nordland, my test knit of the month. Oh, I keep eating hair in my mouth. That was my first test knit of 2022. So those are all my finished objects. Not a ton, but still enjoyable. Um, and now we'll get into works in progress, which I've got three. So we'll start off with a sock, which I'm actually keeping in this little pouch that I made with some vintage quilt cotton that my mom gave me. And then it's just a zipper pouch. Um, it's lined on the inside. And this is like a notions pouch slash small project bag it's really a good size for a sock project um, and this is the sock that i'm working on it is the drops 200-10 it's either 200-10 or 100-20 pattern it doesn't have a name beyond that but is this little pretty lacy sock um it's free pattern from drops um, and I've just turned the heel and I'm starting to do the gusset decreases. So that's where I'm at on this, but I'm really liking um, the effect. I think it's really pretty. I like the little ruffle at the top, even though it's kind of a pain because you have to cast on like 200 stitches and then pass them over. Um, but it's got these really pretty eyelets and this motif and then the eyelets go down the leg and then I will pick them up and do the eyelets on the top of the foot as well. Um, some new techniques in this sock construction as well. The new, there was a different way of doing the heel that I've never done before. I think it's kind of like a Dutch heel. Um, instead of doing short rows to turn the heel, you end up doing decreases, which is kind of interesting. I'll just keep you posted on the fit of that. Um, and I did knit it a little bit shorter than the pattern called for just cause I don't love a super long sock. And I was worried that 
it was going to be too long if I did it a lot longer. It's about five centimeters shorter probably than the pattern called for. But yeah, it's really cute. I'm knitting this in Columbia Minerva Nantuck Fingering. This is a vintage yarn that I got for free from a woman at my church. It's 100% acrylic. It's not the most pleasant yarn to knit with. It splits really easily, especially because I'm using these teeny tiny needles. This is knit on two millimeter needles and I am using um, Haya Haya Sharps in uh, 12 inch circulars. I bought these specifically for this project because I have only one other set of two millimeter circulars and they're like not short enough to do just like this but not quite long enough to comfortably do magic loop and I refuse to knit socks on DPNs unless I'm turning the heel. I'll turn the heel on DPNs but other than that and even that like two millimeter DPNs do you see how bent that is? That is not a straight needle. They're just so small that they're not very sturdy so they're like curved quite profoundly just from being held in my hand. Um, so I use those to turn the heel, but yes, I'm using high, high sharps, 12 inch circular, 12 inches, I think is a little bit too long. I was worried that the nine inch wouldn't be super comfortable. 12 inch, I think might be stretching my fabric a little bit, but I do like the high, high sharps. This is my first time trying them and they are sharp. Um, probably partly because they're such fine needles and partly just because they're sharp, but I really like them. They're really smooth. The stitches move along there really well, which is a problem I've had with acrylic before. It kind of squeaks on metal needles but I haven't had that issue at all with these so overall going pretty well I think it's really cute I think it's pretty when the light shines through and I think these will be very cute for spring to wear in like my Birkenstock clogs or poking out at the top of my boots um just a little springtime sock so this is the first one I have one more skein of this it's one out so it's about 26 grams 27 grams should be more than enough for one sock because I can do a pair of socks in 35 grams for myself. So yeah, that is my little first work in progress, my sock project. I've mostly just been working on this on the bus and it's going along really quickly. I have done like basically, I did the whole heel turn yesterday pretty much. So, and today at lunch, well, I did the heel flap yesterday and then I did the heel turn at lunch and I'm now doing the gusset decreases, which I started on my way home. So yeah, it's going well. I think it will fit well, um, but I'll let you know when they're finished. So that's my first work in progress in my cute little zipper pouch, which is a great size because it can hold a sock and I've got stitch markers and stitch holders and tape measure and everything in here. So that's great to just throw in my bag. My second work in progress you've also seen before, um, I had Mm, I can't remember if I had just started this or if I was about to start it in my last video. I think I was about to cast it on. Um, this is the Aros sweater from Petite Knit. It's a striped sweater. I'm knitting mine in Plotilope single stranded, um, just from leftovers that I had in my stash, stash from a color work project. Um, and I'm doing four colors. I think the colors go, this is Ivory Heather, marsh heather no clover green light beige and marsh heather those are the colors um i think in the swatch that i showed you last time i also had a blue in this project and i started it with the blue um unspun yarn which is a discontinued yarn from white buffalo um once i had gotten into the project i'd probably got i started with the blue at the top and then i'd probably gotten like this far down and i realized that the blue wasn't really vibing with it like it just the color story wasn't really working so i ripped out the blue that was on the bottom and then i cut the blue off that was on the top because i had started with it and this is knit top down but then i just picked up the stitches around this white stripe and knit up for one stripe and did decreases instead of increases so it looks a little shoddy <laughs> right at the top with the decreases but I don't think you'll be able to tell because it's in this dark yarn and it's at the very very top of the sweater um so you'd have to be really close to see that and I don't think anyone else would notice I can hardly notice because it's in the dark yarn so yeah I am probably oh a little over halfway done on this maybe even two-thirds um I think I've got about 10 centimeters more of the body to do before I start the ribbing. And then I'm doing the sleeves at the same time. 
just because I don't want to run out of yarn. I'm doing this with scraps and like this is all of the white that I have left. It's about 20 grams. So I don't want to run out. So I'm doing like a stripe on the body and then I'll do a stripe of the color on each arm. And so I can go down that way and try and manage my yarn amount a little bit better. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to do a stripe a day on this, which is coming along. I did this white stripe on the body and on the arm yesterday. I just didn't have a chance to do the other arm. Um, but overall it's coming along pretty quickly. I think before I left on my trip, I was, I hadn't separated for sleeves yet. I think I was like right here. Um, so I've done all of this body and sleeves in the last week and a half because I started this before I went on my trip and then I had the yoke and one sleeve done when I left and then I finished this on my trip and wore it when I was gone. So when I came home, I had this whip to return to. And I think I'll be done with this in probably another week if I do a stripe a day. Um, I really like how it's coming out. It's really lightweight. I'm really actually enjoying knitting with Plotilope single. Um, if you're not familiar, Plotilope is an unspun Icelandic wool. So it's very delicate. But I find that because the staple length of the Icelandic wool is so long, even though it's not spun, the hairs like grip to each other really well. So I can just tension it like I would tension any other yarn in my hand and it doesn't break. The only time it breaks is if I'm like, move, if I'm not careful when I'm like picking up the project and carry it, carrying it around. Um, and I also, this might be controversial, but I prefer to knit from the middle on Plotilope because I feel like I can have, it's easier to tear when I'm pulling from the outside. So I just kind of, you can like in Plotilope, this has been knit from, but there's like a, it usually comes in the middle is kind of squished. So I find if you just kind of break it up and like loosen it up, you can kind of get your hand in there and open the middle up to make it look like a donut. And then you can pull from the middle. Um, so yeah, this was a full plate. I had kind of varying quantities of all of this yarn. I had the least amount of this one and I have about 20 grams left. Um, so I probably have 30 grams of the green, probably like 40 grams of this and probably like 60 grams of this. Honestly, I have quite a lot of this one left. So I think this, which is the light beige is going to end up being my collar color. I haven't decided what color I'm going to do on the collar yet. I was just going to kind of see and wait what I had and wait and see what I had left. But I think either the light beige or the brown, actually I think the brown would look really nice kind of because it's the darkest color. I think it would help tie, tie that brown into the rest of it. I don't know. Let, let me know what you think I should do for the collar. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm working on and I'm holding the yarn as I carry it around my house in this project bag that I made that I showed you guys last time. It's kind of a shallower, longer bag. And then it has a little bit of a drawstring in there so you can pull it closed. Not super, not all the way closed, but just pull it a little bit closed and keep stuff in. And it fits all my yarn and my sweater in there. Great. And I'm knitting this on four millimeter needles. I'm using my Addy Click Rockets, which are the little bit, they're the ones that are a little pointier. And I love them. I think I'm gonna get another set of these. So my full interchangeable set is the Addy Turbos, which is just the standard Addy interchangeables. But I bought an extra pair of four millimeters in the Rockets because I knit with four millimeter constantly. It's like my most commonly used needle size. So now I have two sets of four millimeters, one Rocket, one Turbo. And I think I'm gonna buy another Turbo of the 3.5 millimeter because I end up using those quite a lot as well. So we'll have two sets of 3.5s and two sets of fours which will make it very easy for me to knit so many projects at the same time. <laughs> um, okay, so that's my second whip. And my third whip is my most recent one, which I'm also holding in a little homemade project bag. This I made right before I left on my trip. It's just canvas, flat bottom. I didn't use a pattern or anything, but it's very easy to make a flat bottom bag. You can look it up online and it's very easy. And then it's got a couple pockets in it. So it's got a tall skinny pocket, which is good for a pen or needles. This one fits like, would fit like my stitch marker case or my row counter in it really well. And then this is like a wider one that would fit like a tape measure or whatever. So this is a really big bag. I like to do, this has a snap on it, which I like, cause then I can whoop, snap it closed if I'm like, carrying it around with me, but then I can fold it down 
and make it into more of like a bucket, which makes it easier to knit from, from home. And then it has this little loop on it, which I can like hook to a bag or put my arm through and like knit while I'm walking or something. So yeah, that's this little bag. And it is holding my sweater number 11 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I started this less than a week ago <laughs> and I've already joined in the round. This is a lovely, just very simple stockinette drop shoulder construction sweater. Um, but I picked this pattern in particular. There are so many simple drop shoulder stockinette patterns on Ravelry, but I picked this one in particular because it has some really pretty details on it. So like you get this lovely little um, kind of line down the shoulder and that same motif carries on wherever you're doing increases or decreases. So on the neck, when you're increasing, there's that same motif. And then at the armholes, when you're increasing, you also get that same little motif. So I think it's really pretty. Um, I prefer a drop shoulder construction. I'm knitting this in the smallest size. The sweater only comes, oh, I forgot to tell you all the sizes for this thing. My Vima is the size three. My Aros is the size medium. And this is the smallest size. There's only three sizes, but this has like 118 centimeter bust or something. So it's gonna be very oversized on me. Um, but yes, I'm knitting the smallest size. I'm knitting on five millimeter needles with two strands of fingering weight yarn held together. This is a reclaimed yarn that I have um, that is merino cashmere angora nylon blend i think it's 60 percent merino one of them has cashmere so it's from two different sweaters one of them has cashmere and one doesn't but the one so the one that does i think is 60 15 15 10 and then the other one is 70 15 15 or maybe it's 70 20 10 i don't know it's mostly wool with some cashmere and angora and then a little bit of nylon um, but it has a really pretty halo you can kind of see there from the angora and the cashmere it gives it just a little bit of fuzz and texture um, and it's just a nice off-white color it's actually two off-white colors one of these yarns is a little yellower of an off-white than the other so it's very very lightly marled which I don't think anyone could tell and except for me and if you're looking at it like super close I'm not sure that the camera will pick it up even but there is a little bit of nuance to the color. Um, yeah, so I've just joined in the round and have stockinette in the round forever and ever. I'm not really in a rush to finish this project. It was just, I wanted to have a nice stockinette in the round project to work on like at the movies, um, just some good mindless knitting. And I just really wanted a plain white sweater. Um, Cause that was something that was missing in my wardrobe. And the original pattern is knit with a, like a folded over turtleneck I think I'm just gonna knit mine with a crew neck um it's also knit originally in twisted rib and I'm trying to decide if I want to do it in twisted rib or if I want to do it in two by two not twisted rib I think I'm gonna end up going with the twisted rib but I have not decided yet so there it is very very lovely not a ton of progress on this but I'm probably like 30 percent done now that I've done the yoke so that's my sweater number 11 from my favorite things knitwear and that is all my works in progress so I mean I say that like it hasn't already been half an hour but it has so those are the things that I'm working on I'm hopeful to have the RO sweater done like in the next week or so I want to finish that sock so that I can start some other socks and then that my favorite things knit wear sweater I'm not really in a particular rush to finish I will probably do that one work on that slowly uh, over the next couple of next month or so I'll probably finish it by May if I had to guess um, so yeah, that's all my works in progress and finished projects. Now we're going to get into the very fun and exciting acquisition section. So like I said at the beginning, I went on a trip over my spring break from school. Um, I'm in my last quarter of graduate school and my husband and I just had, just had our, we had our five year anniversary in December. It's his 30th birthday this year. So we like decided to just go on a big fun trip um, before we start saving in earnest for a house. And so we went to Scandinavia. We went to Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and Iceland. We did not spend a ton of time in every country. We spent the most time in Norway and then just a couple of days in the others, but we had a really lovely time. We got very lucky with the weather. Um, 
and it was just really wonderful. Such beautiful countries, such really, really nice people, very friendly, very helpful. Um, we had good food, we had good weather, we got to see all sorts of different things. We got to see cities, we got to see nature. So it was a really, really wonderful trip. Um, but we also got to see many, many yarn stores. I think we ended up going to like probably 20 yarn stores. I did not buy something in every yarn store, but we did go to a lot of yarn stores and I brought home some goodies. So I think I'm just gonna go in chronological order of how, when I bought things and what I bought and where I bought them. So the first place that I bought yarn from, we did go to Pickles in Oslo. Pickles is a Norwegian company. They make yarn, they also design patterns. I think it's two sisters. They have lots of cute patterns, but I wasn't wowed by any of their yarns. They were kind of a little bit pricey for what they were. So that was in Oslo on the first day. And then we went out to Bergen to see the fjords and experience the Western coast of Norway. And because Inga is from the Western coast of Norway and I just am obsessed with her and her beautiful home. Did you, if you haven't watched her latest video, it's the most beautiful view of the fjord. She recorded it outside, it's lovely. Um, but also because of Inga, I learned about the Hillesvog yarn mill. So Hillesvog is a very old family business that makes yarn on the west coast of Norway and their yarn mill, their factory is about half an hour outside of Bergen. So we rented a car and drove around the fjords, but we also stopped at Hillesvog and I had a lovely time and I got some goodies. So what I most was excited about from this company, I had never tried any of their wool, never even seen it in real life, I don't think. Um, it's not very accessible here in the US, but it's like her, it's like Inga's favorite yarn. So I had to try it and I wanted to see it. And she had went there, she went to the mill a, month, a couple months ago and had bought these giant cakes of unspun yarn. And as you know, I'm really into unspun yarn at the moment. I love Plotulopi, I have the, white buffalo so i wanted a couple cakes of the unspun yarn because she said it was super soft and super lovely and she made a tulip sweater by melody hoffman out of it and so i was really hoping i could have some of that i don't i think she said that they don't always have it but they had it when i was there so i got two cakes of this light gray unspun 100 percent norwegian wool um it's extremely soft it also smells extremely cheapy, which I love. I think I have probably about 350, maybe 400 grams of this color. And it comes in the cake um, double stranded. So like it's got two, oh gosh, did I just break it? It's very delicate. It doesn't have the long guard hairs like Plotulopi, so it's a little bit more delicate. But um, gosh, I can't really grab it but it's there's two strands of this held together so I think when you knit it it'll end up being like a DK maybe a light worsted weight yarn um and I want to use this to make just like a very soft cozy simple knitted sweater I'm thinking the lodge I think it's the lodge sweater by Ozetta or maybe there's she has one called 1031 that's also really pretty just like a drop shoulder oversized super cozy sweater Maybe also the Noor sweater from Strika Kaffa, who is a Norwegian designer. So that's what I'm planning for these. They're just so soft, like I could sleep in this. It's delightful. So yes, I have two of those. This is still in its bag from how I transported it home. Um, and then I also, I was just trying to decide, they had four cakes. Um, they had the two gray ones and then a white one and a natural black. And I was asking my husband, James, I was like, oh, I don't know, should I get the two black ones or the two different colored ones and do like a striped thing or get the two gray ones and just do like a plain sweater? And he's like, um, why can't you just get all of them? And I was like, that is the energy I'm appreciating today. He was so sweet. He was like, this is the only time we're gonna come here. Like the next time you come here could be like in 15 years. So just like get whatever you want, which was so thoughtful of him and lovely. And that's the kind of support I appreciate in my life. So I did get the other ones. So there's one plate of this natural gray black color. This is probably 200 grams maybe. And then one even smaller plate of this natural white. Um, this is probably even less than this. So I think the two of these together could make a sweater. Um, I may also pair the blue unspun yarn with them. Um, but that's these. So I got four plates of the unspun yarn, which was delightful. Um, 
I had to pay for it by weight, so I don't remember off the top of my head how much it costs, but it was very affordable. And then I got a few more skeins. I got this mystery skein. This was just in like a basket of mystery skeins. They were 20 kroners each, which I think is about $2.50 US, maybe a little bit less. Um, so this is just 100% wool black, or not black, it's a navy blue. I think it's the troll base from Hilles Vogue, it, which is like a bulky weight, but maybe this is more of a worsted. Um, it could be a worsted, I don't know. I think it's Norwegian lamb's wool and it's very soft and squishy and i think i'll probably make a hat out of this um i don't have a blue hat um so that's what i'm thinking with this i just you know it was two dollars and i liked the color i've been i've been wanting something navy blue so i got that then i got two skeins of this this is hilles fog ask which um inga's been using a lot lately a lot lately and she really likes it's in this very beautiful like of a gray blue it's a cooler blue it's really pretty i'm i really really like this color a lot this is 100 percent norwegian wool um and it's technically a sport weight but i would call this more of a dk it's 350 meters per 100 grams which just seems a little bit thick so sport weight um I have two of these, so that's about 700 meters. I bought these thinking I would use them for a pressed flowers shawl by Amy Christopher's, which is a really beautiful design. Um, but I'm just not sure about the texture on the fabric. It's knit with mosaic knitting for color work. And I just feel like it would, I don't know, I don't love the texture. It seems kind of stiff. So I'm undecided on whether I'm going to use it for that, or I may just use it to make like a Musso top from Espace Tricot, which is just like a very simple yoke, just plain yoke color work, or not color work, just a plain yoked increase sweater, top down. Um, I'm not sure that I have enough for that, but I feel like I could do it like three quarter sleeves or something and it would be really nice. So that's the Esk, I just love this color. These were the only two that they had, they were on sale. I think these were about seven or eight dollars each, which is like 20, 25% off. And they just had the two colors. There's no color number on them or anything. So they may just be one of a kind. I don't know. But I really like those. And then I got some yarn for some color work. So in the store they had a bunch of like store samples. So you could feel the different yarn. And the yarn that Inga loves is their Norwegian Pelth wool. Which is like a native Norwegian sheep breed. Um... And so I wanted to get some of that yarn and I wanted to make an all over color work sweater. Those were what I went in with. I wanted the Pelth wool. There have a couple different bases in the Pelth wool. And then I wanted an all over color work sweater. So I ended up with Solje, which is the kind of sport fingering weight Norwegian Pelth wool base. Um, it's 100% Norwegian Pelth wool, 350 meters per 100 grams. So this is the same yarn, like meterage per 100 grams as the Esk. But you can see like here. Can you see how much thicker one strand of the ask is than one strand of the solia? So this I would definitely say is more of a fingering weight. Um, this is the natural gray color that the yarn comes in, um, the gray sheep. And then this is the natural color. So this is, what's it called? I think it's just called light gray. Uh, it's very pretty, or natural gray actually. Um, so I have, I got 150 grams of this. I had everything, I had kept everything nicely skeined for you. And I filmed this video a couple days ago and then the audio got all messed up. So um, I wound up the yarn. Um, but this is, I got 150 grams of this gray color. So I have another small little cake of that. And then I got two more colors. I have this kind of light blue color, which I think is called it's something ice mint. The names are in Norwegian and I don't speak Norwegian, so I can't tell you exactly what the name is, but this is this light blue color, which is similar-ish to the gray because this is the base, so the blue is dyed on top of the gray, but they're different enough that I think it will work in color work. Um, I really, really like this color. I kind of built the other colors around this one. The, the light is a little wonky, but it's really pretty. And then this is the light brown colorway which I also really like. It's kind of a warm brown color. So I have 100 grams each of the brown and the, gosh, 
the brown and the blue. Um, so those I got for a all over color work sweater. And the pattern I'm gonna make is the Frederica cardigan by Sari Nordland. Um, it's a free pattern from Sari Nordland through Novita Yarns. Um, and I've just started swatching for it. <laughs> I've just like have this teeny tiny little swatch, but I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. This is kind of how they're looking swatched up together so far. You're gonna be able to see. Can you see? Come on. Yeah, there we go. A little bit. Um, I will obviously show you in another video what it looks like a little bit better, but. Um, and then the main color I'm using for this cardigan is Drops Flora. I bought this yarn in Copenhagen actually. Um, but it's Drops Flora, which is a 65% wool, 35% um, alpaca yarn, which I thought would go nicely with the Pelth wool because it's, the Pelth wool has kind of got a halo and it's kind of drapey to it. You can see like, oh my gosh, this is a mess. It's kind of drapey. It's got some like natural give to it. So I figured the alpaca blend would work nicely with that. Um, and it has a little bit of a halo as well. So that's what I got for my Frederica cardigan. I'm keeping everything in this Ikea bag. And then the next yarn I got was in Bergen. Sorry, the light is a little wonky, but I hope that's okay. Um, we went to a little yarn store called Strikaleka. It was very cute. They had lots of fun stuff in there, but they had like a sale bin with quite a lot in it. And everything in the sale bin was two, 20 kroners, which again is like $2 and 25 cents or so. Um, so I got four skeins, no, five skeins of Seneskarn Sisu, which is a sock yarn. It's an 80-20 wool nylon blend. It's super wash. I generally don't go for super wash yarn, but it was a really good deal. So I got two skeins of this kind of darker lavender color. It's The number is 5224. And then I got one skein of this lighter lavender color, which is 4261. I figured I wanted to do some kind of color work with these. Um, that was my thought. Not sure if I'll have enough for that, but that's my thought. I don't have a pattern in mind, but I have a couple options in my Revelry queue. So I got those. And then I got two skeins of 2015, 2015, which is this really pretty kind of turmeric yellowy color. That's very cute. I thought those would make some lovely sunshiny socks. So five skeins of that. I thought even the purple and the yellow could go kind of cool together in a color work sock. So I think between the five skeins, I could make probably at least three pairs of socks for myself. Um, so I got those from Bergen and then we went back to Oslo, did not get anything at any other yarn stores. Then we went to Copenhagen and I told you I got the Flora in Copenhagen, which I really like. This is really nice yarn. Um, generally on my trip, I was trying to look for and get yarns that are not accessible to me here in the US. Um, so the Hillesfog obviously is not accessible to me here at the US. I've Actually, I've been to one store that carries Hillesvog and it's in Canada, in Vancouver. Um, there is a little yarn store called Wet, Wet Coast Wools that carries some Hillesvog, but not all Hillesvog. So they do have Solia, so if I do run out, I can get more there. But they don't carry all of the bases. Um, and then Sisu, I can actually get at my local yarn store. That's like the closest yarn store to me here in Seattle. They carry it at the Tea Cozy Yarn Shop, but not for that cheap. Um, sorry, I like almost coughed. Drops is not sold at any store in the US. I do not understand, but there is z there are zero yarn physical yarn stores that carry drops in the US. Um, you can buy it online from the UK at Wool, Wool Warehouse and ship it to you, but I like to see yarn in person and touch it and feel it and see the colors before I buy it. Um, so now that I have had the opportunity to go to a lot of yarn stores that carry drops, touch it and feel it, um, I would feel more comfortable ordering it in the future because I know what it looks like and feels like um, in real life. So I bought Drop the Flora while I was there because um, it was also a good deal. I want to say these were like $3 each and I bought five of them for my sweater project. 
So that's what I got in Copenhagen. Um, I also tried to buy yarn from the country that I was in. So I bought Sandesgarn and Hillesvog are both Norwegian companies. Drops is a Danish company. Um, and then I bought in Malmo. We did just like a quick day trip over to Malmo in Sweden, which is very close to Copenhagen. And I bought two skeins of this sock yarn. This is Svarte Fadit, um socks. It's a worsted weight sock yarn. These are 70 or 80 meters, 80 meters per, 100, per 50 grams. So they'll make a really soft, squishy pair of socks. They're 75, 25 wool and nylon. I think they are not, oh, they are super wash. Um, and I may use this, it's like a multicolor, kind of a couple different blues and a white. I might make a pair of socks for my husband out of these, but this is a Swedish brand, so I got those. And then we were walking back to the bus station and we passed by a Panduro hobby, which is like the Michaels of Scandinavia. It's just a all over, like all kinds of crafts store, a multi-craft, an arts and crafts store. And we just popped in really quick because I had seen that they carry yarn. Um, I had done a lot of research on yarn stores before we went in anticipation. Um, and we walked in and they had some yarn on sale and I got four skeins of this Schachenmeyer Regia sock yarn. Schachenmeyer is a German brand and Regia is a very well-known sock yarn. It is 25% wool, 75% wool, 25% polyamide. I don't think it is superwash treated. It doesn't say superwash on the label anywhere, um, but it might be. Um, but this is like marketed to be for hand dyeing, which I thought was lovely because also right before I left on my trip, I was at the Goodwill by my house and they had six two ounce tubs of Dharma, which is an acid dye that lots of hand dyers use. Um, so I bought that with six of them for $8. It was a really good deal. And so I could, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to, but I have these four blank skeins that I can try. So maybe some hand dyeing on, um, but they were on sale for like $3.50 each. So again, a really, really good deal. Four skeins, so I could make a sweater out of this very easily. I could probably honestly get a sweater out of three skeins because it's fingering weight yarn. I think it's 400 and 420 meters per 100 grams and I have 400 grams. So I could get plenty out of this. Um, it's really nice. I like it a lot. So I have four of those. I honestly kind of wish I'd bought more. So I got those in Sweden and then we went to Iceland. That was our last stop. We stopped in Iceland on the way home and I had to buy some Let Lopi. So, oh wait, I, um, yes, I did have to buy some Let Lopi. So I got, again, I got six skeins of Let Lopi in three different colors. This is the color 9418. It's this really pretty kind of lightish blue. Honestly, it's not too dissimilar from the Esk. The Usk is a little more purple. The Let Lopi is a little lighter of a blue, but they're similar vibe. Um, so that's really pretty. I liked that color a lot. I got two skeins because um, I want to use them to make socks. Um, I was I have a little bit of Let Lopi left over from my Badger and Bloom sweater that I made back in January. And um, I was looking around for what to do with leftover Lopi and I came across the Ozetta Camp Socks collection. She has a whole collection of three patterns that use Lopi to make socks. So I got a couple hundred gram quantities of Lopi to make socks with. So I have this blue color. I've got this, um, I think it's called Honey Beige. It's the, it's number 85, which is like this light, lovely kind of warm beige brown color. And then I got 086 which I think is also I think it's light beige Heather I think it's the same beige as the Plotu Lopi yeah that I'm using in my other sweater so um these are the three colors I got which honestly would look really nice together in like a color work or a stripe situation um but I'm gonna use them to make socks and then I got one more sweaters quantity <laughs> of drops love you seven i also got this at a cute store in iceland it was like these were like two dollars a ball i think these were like three dollars a ball very affordable less than you would buy it for in the states you can get lopi also at my local yarn store but for like twice as much 
Um, and then this is the last thing I got. So this is Drops Love You 7, which is a fingering weight cotton. Um, and I got mine in shade 35, which is the wheat color. It's like a beige. Um, and I got eight skeins of this, which is 400 grams because I want to make the, sorry, I am, I want to make the Magnolia by Erica Knight. It's a pattern that she made for Rowan. Um, and it's a really pretty like cotton button up shirt. I just thought it would be really nice for summer to have like a lightweight knitted cotton shirt like collared shirt that you could i could wear as like a beach cover up or i could wear it to work or i could wear it like could dress it up and down in lots of different ways and i really liked this neutral beige color so i got eight skeins of that and these are 170 meters per 50 grams 100 percent cotton um little lovely little fingering weight yarn so that is it that is a lot of yarn i think i ended up with like more than 40 skeins of yarn which is a lot. That's more than one person needs for sure. But like my husband said, I'm not going to Scandinavia again anytime soon. And um, so I just took advantage of the opportunity that I had to do a little shopping spree. And honestly, I think I spent less than, I think I probably spent around 200 to 250 US dollars for all of this yarn, which like, this is a lot of yarn. This is several sweaters quantities. This will keep me busy for quite some time. And it was just fun to go to all the yarn stores and see all the different yarns and all the lovely people that were there knitting in the stores and everyone was so kind and so helpful. And it was just really enjoyable to see all the different yarns and the different yarn stores. And it was great. I had a lovely time. So that is my ginormous yarn haul. She's full to the brim. Um, but yeah, I had a great time on my trip. I will put some clips here at the end of the video of, and pictures of the places that we went and saw. It was so, so lovely. Um, if I have any Scandinavian viewers, you have beautiful country and countries and homes and I'm very jealous. Um, but yeah, that is that. So that's it for my video for today. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the natural dyeing video that I posted just a couple of days ago. Um, I know I want to keep trying to post two videos a month. So like one video like this where I talk through all my projects and then another video that's a little bit different. I'm thinking for next month or whenever I finish it, I want to do like a project diary video. So from start to finish on a single project. And I'm thinking I will do it on the Frederica cardigan from Sorry Nordland, which um, by the way, I wanted to ask your opinion. I have two charts that I've made up and I will put here. Um, I'm trying to decide which way I want to do the contrast colors. Um, so let me know which one you prefer. But I'm trying, I, I think it would be interesting to do that video from like a project lifespan video because it's a free pattern. So it's very accessible and it is written flat and I am not knitting color, color flat, I refuse. So I'm going to convert it into a steaked cardigan which I've never done before. Might be a little bit risky, but I've checked out some books from the library that talk about steaking and traditional color work designs. And there's lots of resources online. I know Mel from Mel Make Stuff um, alters patterns and does a lot of steaked color work. So I'm going to rely heavily on her expertise. Um, and then I think I'm gonna modify the neckline a little bit as well. I may modify the construction a little bit. So I think it could be interesting to do like a project diary video of that. So if that's something you would be interested in, please let me know. Some other video ideas that I had were about like yarn choice, yarn substitution, um, different sock options. I'm kind of doing a sock journey here. As you can tell, I got a lot of yarn for socks. So I'm gonna be knitting a lot of different socks and a lot of different styles. Um, so I think eventually it could be fun to do like a comparison of different heel methods and how they fit. Um, if you have any other ideas of things you'd like to see from me, please let me know. I'd be happy to oblige. Um, and if not, I hope that you are doing well, that you are finding a little bit of joy in these crazy times and that um, I'm glad I was able to keep you company for a little bit. I really enjoy reading all of your comments. Thank you so much to everyone who has commented on my previous videos. I really just like hearing from you, seeing what you're hearing, what you're working on, hearing your feedback, hearing your thoughts. I enjoyed chatting with you. So if you are interested, leave a comment down below. I will reply to all of them, um, or at least give them a little heart to show you that I've read them. Um, I read them all. I love them. They make me very happy. Every time a little notification pops up, it's great. 
Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I am looking forward to seeing you again soon.